It's a special time in a young male or female villager's life when they leave the safety and confines of the town center and go to university. There are so many things to study, so many ways to learn how to defeat your enemies. But much like the universities of the modern day, universities in Age of Empires 2 DE are not created equal. They offer different courses and majors. Looking to become an architect? Well, you might want to think twice about attending Aztec State. Are you living on the steppe and looking to get a job fortifying walls after graduation? Well, you might want to think about attending Mongol U or Tatar Community College. And if you're a bright-eyed young hun trying to find your way in the world with only your trusty steed and a dream, well, college might not be right for you. Technologies at the university can turn the tides of battle. Without ballistics, your crossbowman and arbalist will fail at marksmanship. Chemistry not only gives your archer's missile units more damage, but for many civilizations, though not all, you can even train new units or research maybe even another technology. Technologies that increase building hit points and armor, such as masonry and architecture, allow you to win treb wars in the late game so you can control key points on the map, build up your forces for that final assault, and lead your civilization to victory. The university in AoE 2 DE is often thought of as a building primarily aimed at shoring up your civilization's defenses. And while there's definitely truth to this, one of the points I want to address here is that the university and its technologies also have a major overall effect on your army. Universities in AoE 2 DE improve your military units, may even give you more options, and strengthen your civilization as a whole. So sit back, and when Cynthia comes knocking on that door, wanting you to snuggle up on the couch so that you can binge watch New Girl for the 19th time in a row, tell her you can't, because you've got to study. And you are studying, studying the art of war. And if you don't get an A+, then civilization will perish upon the ash heap of history. So pay attention, class, and welcome to the Jimmy James College of Strategic Studies, where upon graduation, you'll be able to get out there, hit the ranked ladder, and get after. All right, so before we get into the tier list, let's actually figure out what our university can do for us. And not only that, but we will also use this as our consideration ranking wise of the university attributes we're going to be looking at here. So the first thing what I want to think about is the university, right? How it enables you to lead those late game assaults, that late game siege, and also protect you from those kinds of engagements, right? When we are in the late game, we're generally not talking about small armies. We're talking about really big armies. And even if you have a play style in general or for a particular game that is based more on, say, raiding your opponent with something like light cavalry, having defensive structures in one's base can be used to reduce the effectiveness of those raids and so you're going to want to be able to take out your opponent's defenses and so again we come back to the university for that so the first thing i want to look at here is masonry and architecture right both of these technologies are doing the same thing but again architecture is just going to compound what masonry does and they are increasing the hit points of your buildings and also increasing the armor of your buildings. So they're going to be a lot more resilient. And we can see, right, they're not that expensive either. They're just food and wood. The importance here is that imagine that you are in a trebuchet war and you and your opponent both have a castle. If your castle has more hit points, then it's going to stay up easier and if you can destroy that opponent's castle, even if they have some trebuchets left, you're going to be able to actually go in and send units who now don't have to fight underneath the castle. You're going to be able to send units in to take out those trebuchets. Your castle could be left standing. And now, right, you're going to have the map control. You're going to be able to hold positions. And that's a major advantage 
in the late game when so much of it comes down to holding territory, taking territory, forcing your opponent off of certain key resources, and having a place where you can can station attacks and move out with from your army. So masonry and architecture can be very important. Now, thinking about the other side of that is the side of siege engineers, right? Siege engineers are gonna give your siege weapons extra range and they're gonna increase their damage to buildings. Again, we have a technology, it's food and wood. It's actually a quite a bit of food and wood, but it's still not that expensive because food and wood, they are more abundant in the late game. So relatively speaking, you should be able to get this at a pretty reasonable time. And this is very important. Again, thinking about that situation that we were just discussing, right? If your trebuchets are doing more damage to an opponent's castle, right? Now you are helping yourself win the trebuchet wars. And we don't have to just think about trebuchet wars. You might think about, say, sieging your opponent's village, destroying their town centers so now they can't make villagers, right? Again, masonry and architecture is going to help that town center stay alive. Siege engineers, it's going to help you destroy it, right, if you're on the other side. So these technologies are very, very important, and we are going to rank them pretty highly. Now, another technology that I want to look at, moving on away from this idea of sieging your opponent, is to look at chemistry. Now, chemistry on the surface seems like it's pretty straightforward. It's granting your missile units, so your ranged units, plus one attack. And that's nice to have because plus one attack is going to help you out with doing some damage. And now every civilization has chemistry, so this really isn't making a difference between civilizations. Where we do see quite a big difference here is that chemistry can actually unlock certain types of units and even a particular type of building. So once you get chemistry for some civilizations, it will unlock hand cannoneers, cannon galleons, bombard cannons, and bombard towers, right? This is actually very crucial because now you have a whole new range of options with which you can try to defeat your enemy and use these against your enemies. So we're going to judge chemistry based more on the fact of what kinds of units it helps unlock, right? Do you have access to all of them? Do you just have access to a small subset, right? Not only units, though, there's also the Bombard Tower. And we'll I'll talk about that a little bit, bit more talking about towers. But having this kind of gunpowder technology can really give you an advantage in the late game. And so that's how we are going to grade chemistry. Now, I do want to just mention for a second ballistics. Every civilization has it. But ballistics is an extremely important technology. Your ranged units basically are not able to hit moving targets if they're at any kind of range if you lack ballistics. It's pretty expensive, especially in Castle Age, which is often when you need it, especially if you're playing ranged units like Crossbowmen in Castle Age. It's indispensable. And so one of the things that we are going to do is any civilizations that have bonuses that help you acquire ballistics we are going to give those civilizations a bit more favorability why because ballistics is so important in helping out your ranged units okay so the next thing we're going to look at on our list here is thinking about towers and right we see the university right you start off able to build a watchtower in feudal age but then to research right guard tower you're going to need to research that from the university keep you're gonna have to get there and bombard tower as well right so now we can see right our watchtowers don't have a lot of hp in feudal age we go up start getting up to guard tower well guard tower is going to increase the hp right the watchtower hp will also be increased a little bit from this time because it's going to gain more hp in castle age but still the guard tower is going to give you a bump to your damage to your hp to your building armor etc and the real thing here about Guard Tower is that it's not a very expensive upgrade, as we can see. Uh, it's only 100 food, 250 wood. So if you are investing into towers already, you might as well pick it up. Keeps, right? Again, a bit more expensive, but still only food and wood. Not so bad, especially for an Imperial Age technology. It's going to also increase the ability of your towers. And then we have a completely different kind of unit. It's the Bombard Tower. You can take a look and see 
the uh, the damage that's being done. Bombard Towers are doing quite a lot of damage. They also cost different resources. They're costing stone and gold. So this can be a difficult unit to make a lot of, but they are very, very strong. So that's a pretty important thing to take note of there. And so again, we're going to consider access to these towers as fairly important and also consider, right, the role of arrow slits it's going to increase the attack of your hours your, I mean, your your hours your towers by adding extra arrows so towers that lack arrow slits especially in the late game when units tend to have more pierce armor that can actually be pretty important you're going to want arrow slits in order to have your towers be doing a lot of damage overcoming that pierce armor in those late game units okay just a few more on this list and then we'll be able to get into our tier list rankings um fortified wall right fortified wall is going to drastically increase the uh the hp on your wall and your hit points your armor etc so fortified wall is not a bad technology to pick up and it's pretty cheap again a lot of these university technologies as you can see right are pretty reasonably priced so we have a we have nice in-state tuition here at the university so fortified wall it can be pretty situational i mean if you have a lot of stone walls and you're reliant on stone walls and this can be true for closed maps say like arena or maybe even hideout when it's often a strategy for a player to wall a particular side fortified wall can really come in clutch and so it is worth considering whether civilizations have it heated shot right it's going to cause your towers and castles to do more damage to, to ships this is really well first of all it's only important in water maps and only important where you know warships are being made i guess fishing ships too if they're fishing near your coastline but i think it's a lot more important for water sieves and that's how we're going to think about it if civilization is a naval as a naval one we are going to factor in heated shot a lot more prominently treadmill crane villagers constructing buildings faster this is not bad i don't think you see it researched all that much I think it is a little pricey for what you are getting and you know oftentimes you have so many villagers like say repairing oh cement repairing but building a building you might have three or four already getting up 20 percent faster it can help some like i don't want to dismiss the technology outright i think it's especially useful when say you are maybe using towers in the late game or castles and these kinds of uh of attack based defensive structures that are that are helping you take map control i think treadmill crane can really come in handy a lot more there so um lastly murder holes every civilization has it so it's not really a big deal uh in terms of a point of comparison but it's going to eliminate the minimum range on your towers castles etc so it's it's important to get if you are trying to keep your towers alive i think especially um, if you already have a bunch of units at the base of your castle attacking something has gone really really wrong already and your castles have so much hp that they're probably going to be okay um, you'll probably have enough time to marshal up some reinforcements to save it so i think really murder holes protecting towers is probably the best place for it so thinking about these technologies here right i want to i hope it's obvious to you that the university is not merely a defensive building like i think it's often portrayed right i mean siege engineers that is designed to help destroy buildings it's an offensive technology chemistry is unlocking you know weapons that can be used i think both offensively and defensively hand cannoneers are a gold unit they are possibly you know a gold unit that you're building an army around Bombard cannons can shell enemy buildings. They're also a good defensive anti-siege unit as well. And Bombard Towers? Like, if you're using Bombard Towers for defense, they're so expensive. I think it's actually a waste of them when a town center might be better where you can actually garrison villagers inside. Bombard Towers are often really used for taking map control and, in fact, even pushing your opponent and fortifying the lines of your army so that an opposing army can advance into you and you can actually advance forward so i think bombard towers are actually used much more as an offensive weapon than a defensive weapon in practice so 
we can not only see that, but see that ballistics, right? Ballistics is enabling your crossbowman to do more offensive damage to kill a lot better. So, right, we are seeing these these technologies, right? There is a sort of there is, I think, somewhat of an indistinguishability between their offense and their defense. Uh, for any of you who like to read political science literature, there's a really nice article about something called The Security Dilemma by Robert Jervis. It's published in 1978. I'll put a link to it in the description below. And it does deal with this idea of offense, defense, and to the extent that certain situations favor more offensive weapons or defensive weapons in terms of the technological era, but also this idea of whether we can even distinguish between offensive and defensive weapons. And my point that I wanna make here for you right now is that I think that offense and defense, when it comes to how the university is helping us, I think it's a lot less distinguishable than we might think. So the university is really gonna make your army stronger, I think, much more in a general overall sense. It's gonna help your defenses, of course, and I think it's still right to think of it as doing it, but don't overlook the offensive advantages it can give you. All right, everyone. So we are ready to go ahead and jump into the tier list as we have all of our considerations sketched out. So let me just get my notes up and running here. Perfect. And well, we're going to start off per usual with the Aztecs. And if you are thinking about enrolling in Aztec state, well... Honestly, you might want to think again. So Aztecs do get siege engineers, which is great because they do have a pretty expansive siege workshop, but you're missing both, both masonry and architecture. And that's not so good. Furthermore, you can't make bombard towers. You can't make keeps. Your chemistry doesn't give you any gunpowder units, right? You like all of them, including the cannon galleon, which most civilizations do have access to. It's just, it's just not a good university civilization. You do have a decent number. You do have some technologies, but you're just missing a lot of the crucial technologies that make, that, that make having a university really work for you. So I got to say with Aztecs, right, it's a good thing to have siege engineers. That's definitely keeping them out of the F tier. Okay, next up, looking at the Berbers. And the Berbers are going to find themselves in the B tier. So with Berbers, you're getting siege engineers, which is great. And chemistry is also helping you get... Bombard cannons and hand cannoneers, and that's quite nice. Now, in terms of what you're missing with the Berbers, you are missing architecture, and you're also missing keeps and bombard towers. So your tower game is not that great, and you're not going to have quite the HP advantage in your buildings, at least from what you can get from the university. So Berbers are going to be a B-tier university for us. Now... Next up, we have the Bohemians. The Bohemians, they're going to be the first of our S tier, right? Are they going to be the only? Time will tell, right? So here's the thing with Bohemians. First of all, their universities are quite a bit cheaper. Universities for most civs, right? If you're paying the full wood price are 200 wood, which is quite a lot of wood to, to put towards a building in Castle Age. Bohemians get a minus 100% minus 100 wood discount. So it's a very nice, right? You have 100 wood universities and not only that, but Bohemians, you're getting all of the technologies except for heated shot, which for Bohemians, not the biggest deal since it's not a great water civilization anyways. But the thing that really puts Bohemians into the S tier is that chemistry is available in the castle age. And that means that you can research hand cannoneers. Moreover, you have bombard towers and bombard cannons available and you can later upgrade those bombard cannons with the technology of the archery range not factoring that in here but it's already done bohemians right easy s tier university okay 
Next up, we're going to take a look at the Britons. And the Britons, I think, are a surprising university. I'm going to put them in the A tier. So you have Siege Engineers. That's fantastic. You have Masonry and Architecture. Also fantastic. You have all of your tower upgrades, right? At least in terms of your ones that do... Uh, that do arrow damage, right? You have arrow slits that goes with that. That's really good. You have fortified walls, which is great. Really, the only thing with Britons that you're missing is the fact that chemistry is not giving you any gunpowder units. And that is going to knock the Britons down a tier. But I think overall, you have a very strong, very strong university. Okay, next up, we have the... Bulgarians. And again, the Bulgarians are missing a lot of techs at the university, but I think when it comes to having the important ones, they're actually kind of surprising. So you have siege engineers and architecture, which is really nice because the Bulgarians, right, their unique unit, the Krepost, which is kind of a uh, a mini castle, right, a unique building of theirs. The fact that you have architecture is very, very good. Now, with Bulgarians, right, you're Chemistry, right? You're not getting any gunpowder, so that's disappointing. You also don't get fortified wall, which is pretty disappointing as well. You do get keeps, but you don't have arrow slits, so your towers are kind of middling. It is nice to have keeps, but you're probably not going to be relying on those. You're probably going to be relying on your crepost anyways. So I think with Bulgarians, right? The fact that you get siege engineers and architecture, that's a really nice combination. And I think that having those is enough to put them into the B tier even without any gunpowder. Okay, next up is the Burgundians. And Burgundians are tricky here. I think the Burgundians are also going to wind up in the B tier, right? You're getting architecture, but you are missing siege engineers, which is a big drop off. However, chemistry is granting you bombard towers, hand cannoneers, and bombard cannons. And not only that, but they're doing more damage as units per the civilization bonus. Ah, oh, man. You know what? I actually think based on that, because that can be so crucial, your university for Burgundians is unlock, unlocks very, very powerful units. I think that fact actually has to move Burgundians up into the A tier, right? You're missing a really crucial technology in Siege Engineers, but because of the civilization bonus you're kind of helping to make up for that with your Bombard Cannon. And your Hand Cannoneers are doing extra damage. You know what? I gotta say, gotta be an A tier for Burgundians. Okay, next up we have the Burmese. And with the Burmese, we're actually going to stay in the A tier, right? A lot of A tier civilizations at the beginning of the alphabet. And look, you get Siege Engineers, you get Bombard Cannon, right? That's really nice. Now you also get architecture. That's great. You are missing bombard towers and hand cannons. So you're not getting the full complement of, of gunpowder units. And for your keeps, you're also missing arrow slits. So I think that that's not such a good deal here, right? Um, you do get treadmill crane, and that is something that makes them different from Britons who don't get treadmill crane. But again, arrow slits for those towers. Again, one of the reasons that you know this is important for Burmese is that, well, since you don't get bombard tower, if you're going to make towers, you're reliant on your keeps. And missing arrow slits is pretty important. But the fact that you do get bombard cannon, I think it for me is enabling them to put them right up into the A tier alongside the Britons, right? I think there are two similar civilizations in this regard. Okay, next up we have the Byzantines. And well, Byzantines are gonna have to go into C tier. So it's a little tricky with the Byzantines. The first thing you're missing siege engineers. You are missing both masonry and architecture. However, that is compensated for a bit by the Civ having extra HP. But this gets really tricky because what it means is that your buildings have more hit points, but they don't have as much armor. So they're often, they often do better against siege, but do worse against, say, like melee units, like paladin raids and things like that. So it's, you know, it's, your buildings are still really good and it's still a great defensive civilization, 
but it is worth, right? The university is lacking those technologies, and we have to bust them for it. Now, in defense of the Byzantines, right, your chemistry is giving you good access to gunpowder, and you are getting the uh, land tower upgrades, which is really nice. You have fortified walls, which is good. I think if all of that were true, right, <laughs> well, it is true. I think if those are the only things, that would be enough to put them in the B tier. But I actually got to downgrade them to C tier in particular because they're missing heated shot. And Byzantines are often played as a water civilization. And for a water civilization, right, you are often going to need to hold amphibious territories. So the fact that you're missing heated shot, I think is a pretty big deal. Is again, we have to think about Byzantines playing on the water, whereas we might not think about, say, Aztecs on water because you're just never going to see it. So for Byzantines, unfortunately, I think for their university, not having heated shot really comes back to drop them down into another tier. Okay, next up, we're going to have the Celts. And Celts are an interesting one. I, I think Celts have to go into... The C tier here. I mean, you get Siege Engineers, which is really good. And you're getting basically all of your other techs, to, right? Except for architecture, right? And that's really important. So you're missing out on architecture. You're going to have pretty strong towers, though you are missing Bracer. Again, that's a Blacksmith upgrade. Not factoring that as much here. Kel Towers are going to be pretty strong. But I think for me, what really knocks them down into C tier, right? The fact that you don't have architecture and you are not getting any gunpowder units so you know celts you know having siege engineers is really important for their composition but unfortunately i think there are some things kind of holding them back and so we're gonna have to hold them into the c tier next up we have the chinese and chinese i gotta say right we gotta go right back up to the a tier for the chinese so it's worth noting that there are some weaknesses here, right? Chinese are missing siege engineers, but you're getting architecture. You're getting all your tower upgrades, right? You missed treadmill crane, but that's not so bad. Um, the thing that really, that, that right there, I think would put Chinese maybe in something like B tier. However, the thing with Chinese is that you're getting all of your university techs cheaper, right? In castle age and even cheaper in imperial age. And that's a really nice bonus, you know, because... Some of these technologies, even if they're just food and wood, they have a bit heavier of a price tag. And anything you can do to keep it easier to get these technologies, I think is really important. And so, for the Chinese, got to give them the got to give them the A tier. Okay, next up, we have the Cumans. Oh, the Cumans! Cumans are going to be our first F tier civilization. Really, the only thing you have going for for you if you're Cumans is you have masonry. You miss architecture. You miss siege engineers. You don't get fortified walls because you don't get stone walls. You have bad towers. You don't even get cannon galleons, actually, which is one of the few civilizations outside of the American civs that don't get cannon galleons. This is a bad university, right? Cuman Cuman tech is not the place I would go study at. So F tier for the Cumans. Okay, next up, we're going to find ourselves hanging out with the Ethiopians. And the Ethiopian University, well, hmm, it's pretty interesting. I, I think from the outset, I think on the outset, I think I got to say it's a B tier. So... You got siege engineers and architecture. That's really nice. That's really nice. You have fortified walls, which is good. You do get bombard cannons, but you're missing hand cannoneer. You're missing bombard towers. And you don't have arrow slits for your keeps. So this puts us in kind of a tricky, tricky situation. I don't know. The more I think about it, the fact that you do get the bombard cannons, I think does... I think does help a bit. You know what? I think this is A tier. It's like the Burmese, right? Where you have a lot of what you need. And with Ethiopians, you have good siege. Yeah, I think that's actually enough for an A tier grade here, right? It's not, that's not bad. 
Okay, so let's move on then, right? Let's move on to the Franks, and the Franks are the Franks. I think are a definite B tier university. Siege engineers and architecture is great. You actually get hand cannoneers and bombard cannons. Again, that's very nice. You do miss bombard towers, and in general with the Franks, you just have really bad towers in general, right? You don't get keeps, and so to me, that's really enough to knock the Franks down. Where with the Franks, you're really forced into relying on your cheap castles for defense, and that's pretty good. I think there's nothing wrong with that, but again, right, we're not really considering castles so much here, right? You are going to have architecture on them, and that's good, but when it comes to actually being able to, say, defend your base with towers, you're not you're going to have a really hard time doing it with Franks, so I think that they're a solid B tier, right? Not a bad university, but still just a B tier. Okay, next up is the Goths, and Goths are going to go in the D tier. Um, well, you have architecture, and that's really good, but the problem is that you're missing just about every other technology for the Goths. I mean, chemistry does give you hand cannons and bombard cannons, right? I it's maybe almost a C tier, but you're just missing too many things in your university. And I just don't think that that is going to work here. I mean, Goths, I think, only have three technologies. Heated shot, they're not really a naval sieve. Um, and then masonry and architecture, and that's it. So it's not a great university here. So, unfortunately, Goths, I think that having architecture keeps them out of the the basement here with the humans, but still not a good university. Okay, next up, we have the Huns, and well, if you were looking for a roommate in the basement, humans, you got them in the Huns, uh, you have masonry. Literally, you have masonry, and that's all, right? Again, now... Then we're we're talking about these these uh, these technologies. We're talking about the the technologies that civilizations don't all share. So yeah, Huns get chemistry. Of course, every civilization gets it. Murder holes. Yeah, got it. Right, etc. So, but when it comes to the technologies that are not uh, that are not ones that everybody shares, Huns whew, Huns are missing pretty much all of those. So it's just not going to be good. Right, not going to be a good university. Don't go to Hun College. Probably not going to learn very much. Right, figure out something else to do with your life. Right, you can still be. Hey, the Huns show you. The Huns have shown us that you don't need a quality education in order to make it in this world because they've been doing it for years. So, all right. Next up, we have the Incas and. Incas, I think, have to go into the C tier. So you get Siege Engineers, and that's nice. And you do have really strong towers, which is good. But you're missing architecture. And like all of the other American civilizations, you have no gunpowder units at all when you get chemistry. And that's just a real downgrade for your university. Your university isn't opening as many doors as it could. I do like the strong tower play. I think it's probably one of the better C-tier universities just because the towers can be so strong. Um, but missing architecture, I don't know. I think that's a real, I think that's a real, real problem for the civilization here. Mm, let me think about this. You know what? Actually, I, I think I could. I think there's an art. I think that their towers, because their towers are costing less stone, anyways, and the fact that you're probably going for more of a tower play, this can really help your civilization. So I think based on the way the civilization is played, I think we can bump Incas up. There, there were a, there were a limit case for C tier, anyways. I think we can go ahead and put them into the B tier. Okay, next up we have. We have the Indians, and I think Indians are another solid B-tier sieve. You get Siege Engineers. Chemistry grants you hand cannons and bombard cannons, so that's very nice. 
Uh, you're missing out on Bombard Tower and you're missing out on Architecture. So this is really, to me, a classic sort of B-tier Civ. All right, next up we have Italians, and Italians are super interesting. I got to put Italians into the A tier. They're Again, they're kind of like Chinese. They're not a perfect Civ. They're another one of these Civs where you're missing Siege Engineers, but you get basically everything else. Now, again, like Chinese, that would have been B tier, but their cheaper University Tech saved them. For Italians, your University Technologies are even cheaper, right? 33% discount. That is very, very nice. I mean, if they had Siege Engineers, they'd be easy S tier. But without Siege Engineers, I'm sorry. I just don't think that we can put you into the S tier. Okay, taking a moment to hydrate here. And moving on to the Japanese. So, Japanese to me, I think are a... I would put Japanese as a really nice B tier sieve. You got Siege Engineers, which is really good. Heated Shot is there, right? Which is really important as a civilization that is commonly played on water. You have all your tower upgrades. In Japanese, you are probably playing towers because you have Yasama at the castle. So that's going to help you out your strategy. And you do get Hand Cannoneers with Chemistry. Now, what you're missing here is Bombard Tower and Bombard Cannon. Those are two pretty important things to be uh, on the on the absent side of, and then you're missing architecture. So again, I think you have some options, but you're missing a bit too many technologies. Eh, it's a B tier. Okay, next up, right, we have Khmer. And Khmer are gonna keep us in the B tier. You know, you have Siege Engineers and Architecture. That's really nice. Chemistry is getting you hand cannoneers. That is helpful, but no bombard tower, no bombard cannon. You're missing arrow slits as well. And I think for me, that's what puts Khmer from, say, A tier and really drops them down to B tier is that, again, you're reliant on those towers. And if you are if you need to make that sort of unit or rather building, and they're going to be a bit weaker because of arrow slits. So, And chemistry is not giving you a major bump, right? It's really just giving you the hand cannoneers. You're not getting bombard cannons. Again, I think... One push in any direction, I think, can put Kamara in the A tier, but unfortunately, not going to happen. Okay, next up is the Koreans, and well, honestly, Koreans might have the best university in the game. You get all the technologies. I believe you're the only civilization that gets every technology, and that's also important because you get things like Heated Shot, and Koreans with their big wood discount, you can often see them played on water. It's important. Chemistry gives you hand cannons, bombard cannons, bombard tower. But the thing with Koreans that's really, really going to get us here is all your tower upgrades are free and instant. And that is including bombard tower. This is amazing. This is like when that kid who goes to college, but he's got a bunch of AP credit. And so he just gets a bunch of things for free. Right. And he goes to, he enters college like as a junior. That's the Koreans. They're way ahead of the game. And for that, got to put them into the S tier. All right, next up, we are going to have Lithuanians. And Lithuanians are... Lithuanians are interesting here. I think Lithuanians have to go... They're somewhere between B and C tier. I think that they are a B tier personally, right? You do get architecture, which is nice. Chemistry is giving you access to bombard cannons, hand cannons, and bombard tower. So you're getting a lot of gunpowder options and you have keeps, but you don't have arrow slits. So that's kind of a downgrade and you're missing siege engineers, right? Give them siege engineers. And I think this is an A tier sieve, but right without it, it's gotta be B tier. Okay, next up we have the Magyars, and Magyars for me, gosh, I think Magyars are probably a D-tier sieve. So you get Siege Engineers, and that's good, but you're missing Architecture, you have no Gunpowder, right? You do have the Cannon Galleon, but, you know, other than that, right, you're not getting anything, and you don't have Keeps, you don't have Arrow Slits, you're just missing quite a lot. I, you know, Siege Engineers is really nice. Having, I mean, most almost every Civ has masonry except for a small handful. 
Um, Siege Engineers is really all there is at the university when it comes to uh, those technologies that are just not shared. So I think that that's got to put them in the D tier. Okay, next up we have the Malay and... Malay are interesting. I think we have another B tier civilization here, right? You have Siege Engineers, which is good. Chemistry is going to give you hand cannons, bombard cannons, and bombard towers. You have keep, speed on of arrow slits, and you're missing architecture. Solid B tier. Okay, next up is the Malians. The Malians are a really tough one for me. Um, I'm going to put Malians in the A tier, but it's kind of a tricky one. So you're missing Siege Engineers, and that stinks. You are missing arrow slits, so you can't fully upgrade your towers. You're missing Bombard Tower. That's not good. Chemistry is giving you hand cannoneers and bombard cannons. That's nice. But I think put all that together, I think it's kind of a B, maybe even closer to a C tier civilization. Now, here's the catch. Right? Here's the catch with the Malians. Right? Oh, and I also say the Malians do get architecture. So that's pretty good. So that puts them more in the B tier, right? Once you grant them architecture. Malians as a technology bonus, right, to their civilization. I think it's their team bonus. They, all your yours and your team's universities work 80% faster. That can have a really big impact, especially in Castle Age, where you or your allies can get, can get ballistics faster than somebody else. It enables you to get chemistry very, very quickly. Right, so that you can get those bombard cannons out. The 80% faster really just kind of opens the door strategically and it creates some nice windows of opportunities. And Malians are a civilization that I think in Imperial Age already kind of struggle with making transitions. So the fact that you have a fast university, I mean Malians <laughs> Malians like graduate from college in two and a half years. That's what they're doing here. So uh their fast learners are the Malians, and I think that's enough. Put them in the A tier. Okay, next up is the the Mayans, and I don't know. I think Mayans are somewhere between C, D, and C tier. I think I'm going to say C tier. So you have you have architecture, but you miss siege engineers. You don't get any gunpowder, so that kind of stinks. You do get keeps, but you don't have arrow slits, so that's kind of a bummer. But... I don't know. No siege engineers, no chemistry, keeps, no arrow slits, well... I mean, I'm just thinking about comp the comparison, say, to goths, and I feel like with... Because goths also got architecture, but no siege engineers. And goths did get a little bit of gunpowder... But the Goth Towers are just so bad. And with Mayans, at least you have some reasonable towers. And I think with that, that's probably enough to get them into, into the C tier. Maybe one of the weaker C tier civs, though. Okay, next up we have the Mongols. And the Mongols... Hmm... Mongols, I think I got to say D tier. Um, you do get Siege Engineers. That's really about it. You don't get an architecture, no gunpowder. Your towers are not very good with Mongols, right? You're getting Guard Tower, but I think you lack... I think you lack Arrow Slits with Mongols. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you do. So you're not getting... You just don't have that many technologies even available to you as Mongols. And that's a major problem, and that's going to put them in the D tier. But having a Siege Engineers... Uh, that definitely keeps them out of the S tier. Or excuse me, out of the F tier, right? Out of the F tier. All right, next up are the Persians. Persians, I think Persians are another C tier civilization. So you have architecture, which is nice. Chemistry is going to give you hand cannons and bombard cannons. Again, that's nice. But you're missing siege engineers and you're missing bombard tower. I think that would be a B-tier civilization, except for the fact that you're also missing fortified walls. And, you know, that could be kind of a tough pill to swallow, given that, you know, you are missing siege engineers anyways. And I think that they're already kind of a, a limit case. And I think that with all of that, 
it's probably more of a C tier university civilization. Okay, next up we have the Poles, and I don't know. I think Poles are kind of surprising. I think the Poles are to me a B tier civ. You get siege engineers. Chemistry is giving you bombard cannons and bombard towers, which is a nice combination. You are missing hand cannons though, and you are missing architecture. So you have some things, you're missing a couple things. That sounds like a B tier civ to me. Okay, next up we have the Portuguese, and the Portuguese are S tier. Ah, man, you're only missing arrow slits, and that's not great, but you're probably relying more on bombard towers anyways with Portuguese, and you have a lot of bonuses for your civilization that can facilitate actually playing bombard towers. Um, and so I think that that makes missing arrow slits not as important. So the fact that you're only missing that one tech, that means, hey, you're a naval sieve. That means you also have heated shot, which is really, really nice. But the thing that makes Portuguese for me such a strong civilization and worthy of that S tier ranking is that all of your technologies as Portuguese research 33% faster, right? Start of the game. So that's going to be really nice. It's kind of like the Malians in that you are going to be able to get ballistics quicker. You're going to be able to get chemistry quicker. And you have such an arsenal of units with Portuguese that that really comes into play handy. And I think then you're also getting siege engineers on top of that, which is something that Malians didn't get. Portuguese for me, they have to go in the S tier elite university. Okay, next up we have the Saracens. I think the Saracens are a really interesting civilization here. I think that they're more of a B tier, but they probably get close to A tier. You have Siege Engineers, Chemistry gives you Bombard Cannons and Hand Cannoneers. And you have all the tower upgrades. The problem with Saracens is you're missing architecture. Uh, you're going to miss Bombard Tower, so that kind of stinks. I think that if you look at that, that's still probably A tier. But Saracens are classified as a naval civilization, and they're missing heated shot. And again, I think that that really hurts them on the water. So Saracens, I think that's enough. They were, again, they were already, I think, kind of on the border. That's enough to put them on the B tier. Okay, next up we have the Sicilians. Sicilians are, I think Sicilians are kind of tricky to even judge in this, and I'll explain why. I think it's a D tier university. You're missing architecture. You're missing fortified walls. You have no gunpowder. And I mean, the thing with Sicilians that's weird is that you don't get any towers. You only get donjons. And so it's a hard point of comparison. I think that donjons, first of all, donjons are much more expensive than towers. And honestly, like, I don't know. I think that they're a strange unit. I've never found them to be very strong. And so I don't really think that that's worth considering sort of in place of it. So you're not getting any really any towers with Sicilians. And that's a real downgrade. However, you do get Siege Engineers, you do get Heated Shot, Sicilians are, are you know, a Civ that can be played on water. I think there might be one of the more marginal uh, naval Civs, at least on maps like Team Islands. Maps where you are relying on transport ships, I think that they jump up a lot higher. And you get Arrow Slits for your dungeons, so I think it's still a D tier Civ though, just because you're missing so much. Uh, the, the whole tower thing, to me, makes it really difficult to compare, but I don't know, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong about that. Again, it's a hard comparison, I think. Next up, we have the Slavs. Slavs, I think. I think Slavs are also D tier. Uh, you do get Siege Engineers, but no architecture. Your towers stink. You don't get any gunpowder. So really, you're just getting Siege Engineers out of the Slavs, pretty much. And I don't know. I just don't think that, that really moves the needle. Okay, next up, we have... Spanish. Spanish to me, I think Spanish are a B tier sieve. So you don't get siege engineers, you don't get heated shot, and Spanish have a full navy tech tree, so you sometimes do see them on water. 
Um, so that's not good. Spanish, the plus size of them, you get architecture and you get all the gunpowder units. So you have a couple things. You're missing some things. I think Spanish. Spanish makes sense to me. Missing siege engineers is really, really big. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's really problematic, I think, here. Because they don't get anything really to balance that out. So Spanish are going to have to go in the B tier. Let me see. Tatars. Tatars, I think... This is tricky. I think Tatars are C tier. Well, I don't know. They might be B tier. Let me think about this. We call them B tier. So, you get Siege Engineers. Chemistry is going to give you hand cannons and bombard towers, which is nice. But you don't get bombard cannons. And you don't get architecture. Your towers are pretty weak. It's kind of middle of the road. It's kind of middle of the road. I'll keep them in B tier. I, I think Siege Engineers is really, really valuable. And you do get some decent gunpowder with them as well. I think we got to keep we, we can keep them in B tier. Probably the weakest of the B tier civs, though. Okay, next up, Teutons. Teutons? Got to put it in the A tier. Got to say, right? You're only missing architecture. Now that does kind of stink, but you're getting all the gunpowder units with chemistry. And so you have a lot of technologies. Um, German engineering, folks. I think the only thing really holding you back from the S tier as Teutons is that there's just not really anything that helps you take it to the next level. So I think that's, I think that's a problem. I will say one of the really cool things with Teutons is that there's a really neat animation where if you if you garrison hand cannoneers inside of a tower, it will shoot two balls. I just think that that's so meme-worthy. Does that get us into the S tier? I don't think we can. We're serious academics here. We're not going to let some meme thing that you hardly ever see in a real game put you into the S tier. Teutons, be proud of your A tier status. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Okay, next up we have the Turks. And I think Turks have to be an A tier. You're only missing Siege Engineers. Now that's huge. So we need to have something else to keep them from falling into B tier. Fortunately, we do with Turks. Turks have free chemistry, right? They're coming in with that AP chemistry credit, and whew, that is so legit. It means you can get gunpowder out from the beginning of Imperial Age. That is awesome. And honestly, that can be so strong. I think it's borderline. I think Turks, even missing siege engineers, are borderline S tier, but we got to have standards, folks. And. If you don't have Siege Engineers, there's no way we can put you in the S tier. Okay, moving on now to the Vietnamese. Vietnamese, I think, are interesting. Vietnamese are tricky. So, here's the thing with Vietnamese. Vietnamese... You get Siege Engineers, which is good. Chemistry is granting you Bombard Cannons and Bombard Towers. You don't get Hand Cannons. You do have good Towers, which is something we couldn't say about the Aztecs, who are a D-tier sieve. The thing with Vietnamese is you're missing Masonry. And you're one of the few civilizations other than Aztecs, really, to miss out on it. Right, Aztecs, because I mean, Byzantines kind of make up for it. I think missing masonry, though, is really... I think that's really problematic for the Vietnamese. Because, man, it's really hurting your buildings here. And you're just going to have some... Even with, say, hoardings at the castle. Right, giving you some of those extra hit points, right? You are getting it shored up, but again, we can't look at that as a substitute for missing the technology, right? I think it's a problem. Now, those are the only technologies you're missing. 
I don't know. We might be merciful here. You are getting some decent gunpowder with Vietnamese. Okay. I can see an argument for B tier. You are getting siege engineers, some decent gunpowder. You do have nice towers in general. All right, let's call it B tier. Right? I'm feeling pretty generous today. Okay, next up, right, we have the Vikings and... I mean, Vikings have a pretty decent university too. You get Siege Engineers and Architecture. I think that's enough for a B tier right there. You're only missing... Well, you don't have any gunpowder. That stinks. You miss Keep and Bombard Towers, but you do get Arrow Slits. So your towers are kind of mediocre. Yeah, I think that's easy. I think that's not a bad B tier civilization for the Vikings, actually. Right, so here's our lists, right? So we're taking a look at the universities, and we see we do have a little bit of grade inflation, not gonna lie, but when it comes to the the cream of the crop, right, our S tier, I think in this case, is, is a rather exclusive group, right? We have some nice contenders in the A tier, but at the end of the day, to me, there are really only three civilizations that can have that elite Ivy League University ranking. And there's also not a lot of really bad civs either other than Cumans and Huns. So, you know, when it comes to, you know, getting your education and getting that diploma in Age of Empires, you know, it's hard to make it in the Ivy Leagues, but I think you do have a lot of solid options to go get yourself that education, learn that reading, writing, arithmetic, uh, you know, and destroying your enemies too. So, that's going to be the tier list for today. I hope that you have really enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, uh, I implore you to go ahead and do that. Hey, it's free. It helps us a lot. And hey, if you like what we're doing here and carrying the flame of this game on into the future for the next generation, right? That's what we're here for. Your subscription helps us out with that. You liking the video helps us out with that. And of course, you know, I really appreciate it myself and uh, it's uh, it's not lost on me, even though it's just a click, it's still something you're taking time out of your day to do. So like you've taken time out of your day to watch this tier list video, I hope you've enjoyed it. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and check you guys out later. See you on the ladder, folks.